God's eclectic. Uh, Arctic Animals, it's my mom's new book. It's 10 bucks on Amazon. Just uh, We just really like it. There's a lot of cool information in there. And it's cute, you know, it's fun for the kids. So please go watch that. And uh, I made some new music for our intro. Mom, can you tell us about the muskox? Well, let's talk about the Arctic first, which is a really unique place. Okay. Because it is at the top of the world, it's 66 and a half degrees north of the equator. And it's so cold up there, it's 45 degrees below zero Fahrenheit in the winter on average. But still, there's eight countries that span the Arctic. So there's U.S., Canada, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Russia, Greenland, Iceland. So, and four million people that actually live in the Arctic in... 45 below zero temperatures in the winter. So that's pretty it's brutal. Pretty brutal. When we were uh, talking about muskox, I really didn't know anything about it. And when I saw pictures of it, I immediately thought of Star Wars. Oh. Star Wars has this, <laughs> this uh, big muskox looking animal called the Bantha Pudu, which is was the sand people ride. And I remember us watching oh, the yeah, yeah, so probably they copied this animal just directly from oh, the yeah. muskox. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's such an amazing animal that lives up there mm -hmm. in the Arctic and mm -hmm. exists in these crazy minus 40 below temperatures. Right. right. Talk about their fur. How in the heck can they sustain life at negative 40 below zero? They do have, they have two kinds of fur. The outer, the guard hairs are, are the protective hairs and the, it hangs really long, almost to their feet. And then they have this nice fine cashmere-like fur that's close to their bodies. Eight times warmer than wool, but it's not itchy. Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing about it is they like to shed those in the spring because it's going to be warmer. But they rub up against uh, like willow trees and and trees that have fallen down and they even go into the towns and rub on like fences and buildings to get rid of this special fur and even cemeteries they'll go in cemeteries and rub off rub this special fur off I was looking up their fur mm -hmm. and it is super expensive oh is it okay yeah, I didn't it's know like about that high level really hard to find uh, type of uh, Wool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, and the indigenous peoples are the ones that they make those into sweaters and mittens and different yarn. Yeah. The other interesting thing that helps to protect the musk oxen um, is their eyes. Their eyes have horizontal pupils. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Horizontal? Uh, yeah, horizontal. Like, Whoa. Yeah. Weird. Um, they, act, they act kind of like sunglasses oh. because of the reflection of the snow. Oh my gosh. So the, the, the horizontal pupils help them. Have you ever seen those sunglasses of like those indigenous Arctic people? No, I haven't. They wear this, this crazy sunglass from old, way back in the day. Yeah. That just has a strip hole for their eyes to oh. see through. So that's yeah. a very good analogy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that sun's probably bright up there. Yeah, that reflection. You were talking about their fur and their eyes. It reminded me of their skull. Oh, they're, well, their horns are about two feet long, and they never stop growing. And the base of those horns are four feet, four, four feet, four inches thick. Their skull is three inches thick. And then there's an air pocket between the skull and their brains. And you can share why it's so thick. Why does it help them? Well, they're... In the summertime, actually in the wintertime and summer, both males and females are fighters. And so in 1970-something, I think, I think it was 1970-something, they did a study on the muskox and found that 5 to 10 percent of their population is depleted because of fighting. They kill oh. each other all the time. Oh. Not only just males, but fe females as well. And they've also studied the muskox brain and found extensive brain damage in both males and females the male is way worse and so how is that why is there so much brain damage well they can run up to 37 miles an hour so 800 pounds mm. at 37 miles an hour is pretty fast mm. and they can go from 50 yards out and oh. then they come and crack each other as, as hard <laughs> as they can and they blow out their their heads yeah. their competitions can last up to up to 20 minutes oh. so after they hit each other they start wagging their heads like this and then they back up again and they'll go way 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 back and then charge again at 30 it's like little car collisions 
And, uh, and then they lose, both of their heads are so hard. You know, you said three, four inch thick. Yeah, yeah. That the loser is the one that runs away. It's not the <laughs> ones that like, like dies or whatever. But yeah, a lot of casualties mm -hmm. with those fights. Mm -hmm. How are they getting so big? I mean, there's not much that grows up there. What, what's their diet like? You know, you would think that, and they're herbivores. So you would think that, how do they sustain themselves on grasses and flowers? And, but they do. And if we talk about the Lord's food web, web a moment, the permafrost melts a little bit in the summer, so there's pools of water, and it's a perfect place for insects to breed. Well, the birds then eat the insects, the carnivores eat the birds, but the birds do something else to help the muskox. And what they do is their droppings are, are fertilizer for the, mus for the plants that the muskox then eat. Mm. So, yeah, but they just eat little grasses, plants, yeah. yeah. In the summer, the musk oxen, um, they like river valleys. They stay by water. But in the, in the wintertime, they go to high ground. They go in the tundra because the snow isn't as deep. They don't hibernate and they don't migrate. They bear through the winter. Mm. But when there's a blizzard that comes, they lay down and they put their backs to the blizzard. Wow. And one cool thing about muskox in the winter time is the females control the defensive formations and in the summertime it's the males the, mm. the males they get charged up they're always fighting how they fight is really quite extraordinary mm. um, they either form a line as to say they found see a wolf they form a line the big bulls stand there and then when they start getting charged maybe by one or two or three wolves they will kind of do a circle formation mm -hmm. around the, the babies. But it's, n it's more complicated than that. They will peel off and kind of set uh, barriers for the wolf to have to go around. Uh, and yeah. you see, it's very systematic. Like a maze. Y yes, the, very systematic. The males mm -hmm. will run with the bulls, then they'll peel off, and it'll scare the wolf to the side. And the wolf will try to make uh, defensive uh, char or offensive charges on both sides, but the mm -hmm. males peel off. It's a really, uh, honestly, like tactically beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. The muskox, like you say, run about 37 miles an hour. Yeah. However, they get overheated quickly, oh. so they don't, they can't sustain that very much. So they can't outrun a wolf, for example, or a, or a grizzly. So that's when they go to higher ground and, do, and circle up. In the 1860s, there were no musk oxen left in Alaska at all um, because of overhunting for their fur and their, and their meat. So what they did was go to Greenland and they got 34 um, yearlings and calves and, and they started breeding them back in Alaska. By about 1968 there were 750 musk oxen and then today there's about 4,000 in Alaska. Wow. Yeah. And about 150,000 throughout those eight countries. Wow, right 150,000. Mm -hmm. So they're not yeah. too much. So dangerous. now that it's a pretty healthy population. Yeah. yeah. One really interesting fact about the musk ox is if you look at their their bones, their skeletal remains mm -hmm. from thousands of years ago, right. they are not much different from how they are now, which is perplexing to evolutionists. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how can mm -hmm. there be this animal that survived the Ice Age and all this stuff mm -hmm. when you have, you know, very similar uh, bones? Um, so yeah, I that was science neat. uncovers the creation, God's creation, every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talked about the, the humans being their biggest predator, and there's been some news about them of, of late uh, in Nome, Alaska. No, Nome has had this, this herd come down and live in their city, and, and they're, it's kind of funny, they're, the muskox have kind of taken over their cemetery, so they won't <laughs> let people around the cemetery. And what's kind of sad, they're up in Alaska, there's only been two people die in like, well, there's one in 1964, a 73 year old man died by a musk ox. And then in 1922 in Alaska State Trooper tried to, you know, sh shoo him away. Uh -huh. And you got a 37 mile an hour runner with a <laughs> yeah. battering ram. Of course, you know, it's gonna smash you, mm -hmm. especially if there's kids around. So humans are really the, um, you know, poaching and overhunting is really the only damaging part to this population, but it'll survive you know, if it can survive negative 40, it can survive humans. They just killed one recently, actually, in 2023. Because oh. they come down to these towns, and, you know, you got 
people feeding them corn and stuff, of course they're going to want to hang out there. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, uh, but the neighbors complained and it seems like everything bad always starts when neighbors complain <laughs> and they have this lone musk ox sitting there. Of course, state trooper kills it and they have a picture of this neighbor hacking it up for its meat, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it's all very uh, mm -hmm. strange how, how we handle these things, but mm -hmm. they're they're living in captivity all over the there there's farms for their fur in Alaska. They're pretty tame animals. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you want to do next one? We gonna talk about narwhals? Yeah, let's talk about narwhals. We'll do one more animal in the Arctic. We'll do narwhals. Narwhals. That's good. Thank you for watching. Yeah.